name is Diana Makodawa. I'm a senior maintenance engineer with the drilling and infrastructure division in Geothermal Development Company. My job is maintenance of the drilling rig and the auxiliary equipment. So think about it like the human body. I break down the rig like a human body. For example, we have the air system, which is the lungs. We also have the power system. And we also do things like greasing, which is like, what do you do to your body? You grease your body, you pack a mafuta, don't you? And the other things we do at the rig, we service the rig, that is like doing some exercise to ensure that every system is working correctly. We do various other maintenance works, like uh, preventive maintenance, breakdown maintenance, uh, predictive maintenance, all about ensuring that the equipment is running as per the requirements of drilling, who actually uh, drill the well. I am the product of an engineer and an economist. So I had uh, my father as a role model because he's a civil engineer. Growing up, I never got myself uh, dolls or anything like that to play with. Instead, my father got me counting boxes, which enabled me to be better at maths and I was good at sciences. And uh, I went to university and I studied electrical and electronics engineering. I joined GDC in 2010 as a maintenance engineer. My journey has not been so straightforward. It's meander, there are a few challenges. Like for example, when I went to university, uh, the women were not more than 30% of the class. And uh, like for example, in my class, I, we were only three women. So I had to learn how to navigate all as I was studying already in a male dominated environment. And uh, lucky for me, my teachers were very supportive. And the, I, I never faced any, biases, bias, any biases when I was studying. What I like about my job, honestly, is that it's like a problem solving uh, career. Every day there's a new challenge, something to learn something to implement, uh, a new solution, uh, and that's what I enjoy. I enjoy putting in place new processes or coming up with solutions. When I joined GDC, for example, in my department, we were three women out of 70 staff. So the rest were men. And uh, what I liked about GDC is that um, Honestly, the women were given an equal opportunity at roles in my department. I was never turned uh, away from a, a role. I was given every opportunity at every, op uh, every role that I wanted. First of all, I think uh, most people think engineering is very difficult. I don't think there's any job that is very easy. All jobs come with their own individual challenges. What I would say with engineering is that you have to put in the work. You must be willing to put in the long hours to get the job done or to get your studies done. It's not a walk in the park. Of course, uh, women face various challenges in the, in the workplace. They can be as minor as actually the coverall and overalls we get in the field to as major as uh, gender or cultural biases. My biggest lesson is, has been learning to say yes. I think a lot of women shy away from opportunities. Like you, if you see a job advert, it has 10 requirements, and you see that you only have seven, you decide not to apply. Actually, you should send your CV. So I would say grab every opportunity that comes your way. And don't worry, even if you're not able to, be, to win at it, you will have learned something. And that is the key. You, you are learning even as you fail. Lucky for me in GDC, I am surrounded by wonderful women who have been extremely supportive of my journey. Uh, my uh, original boss was a, a female. And one of the things about having women around you is that you share some experiences and some experiences, they, some women know what you're going through and have already come up with solutions for what you're going through. 
So being able to network with them, talk with them, share experiences, share challenges, share solutions is fantastic. So whenever you see a woman out there, I would, I would say for any woman who's entering the industry, look for a female mentor because they will give you the, the, the steps to, for you to move ahead. Yeah. I think we need to start young. I think we need to not only talk to students in high school, also talk to students in primary school. Get all uh, the, even men and women and young girls interested in the sciences young. Like I said, I learned maths when I was a little kid. I knew board maths even before I went to nursery, just because I was exposed to it. So we need to expose our young girls to STEM very early. Every step you take adds up. You may not see it at the moment, but you need to start now for you to affect your future. Now is the time to get into the sciences. Now is the time to take on those challenges. My name is Janet Okoth, working for Geothermal Development Company. I've been here since 2015, so it's close to six years now. I'm in Geothermal Resource Management Department. I am an engineer, and what we do mostly is, it's, 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 we have divisions, we have the reservoir engineering, the steam fields management. So in reservoir engineering, we are able to evaluate the fluid flow within the earth, and to be able to characterize the behavior when, once we discharge a well, to see the capacity that a well can give as output. Engineers, geothermal engineers, and first of all geothermal is heat within the earth. So a geothermal engineer is, is supposed to work ways to extract the heat from the earth, bring it to the surface, and be able to use it directly or indirectly. And in our case, it's indirectly for electricity. I can, I can say all my life, or let's start from primary school, I was good in subjects like maths, science, and basically I would get things pretty fast. An average student, but would get it pretty fast. I developed a love for maths and sciences in primary school, which my teachers, which my teachers saw. Um, I'm a quiet person, so they would really try to involve me in projects, take part in science fairs, and to just showcase what I've learned in class and to demonstrate it through projects. I finished my, my primary school, then went to high school, uh, St. George's Girls, where, we were, where I was able to, to continue my passion and my love in maths and science. Though it was a bit challenging, because in primary you get where you get your multiple choices, but here you really need to express yourself. So I really need to come out of my comfort zone. I struggled a bit in Form 1 and 2 and I was advised again by my teachers uh, on my strong points and I just continued working hard, passed my exams, was helped in choosing subjects in my careers. Um, I was supposed to be a doctor, yeah, because yeah, my dad is a doctor, my mom is a lecturer, but seeing him work, his passion, his dedication, I thought I'd be in medicine. And following my passion of maths and sciences, I chose engineering, electrical engineering, as my second option, and sports science as my third option. I also played basketball in my high school. I really love sports. So most of the challenges I face, even in the engineering world, in the technical field, some of them I face them in the sports field. Most of my life I've just been outdoors and I love being able to make a change in people's lives. Traveling, not even far from the urban centers where we work, just going out to talk to children, students in the surrounding project areas, we are able to see not many people know so much about geothermal, not so many people know about energy. The access to electricity is also lacking. 
not all of Kenya is connected. So I'd really love to be a part of the team that will create accessibility for electricity in our country. It's important to me to make a change in this world because we are all equal, we are all humans, deserving of proper basic care. So why should it be me who's experiencing all this? That could be my sister, that could be my daughter, that could be my brother, my father, my mother, my grandparents. Why not just make it a better, make it easier for people to live in this life? Even once after we leave, for the people, the generation that is coming, so that they may be able to experience an easier way to navigate through this world. Like right now, in, my, uh, in where I work, we are two women surrounded by a, a large number of men. So we try to work as hard as we can. There is no excuse. We are thinking of what about the person who did not get the opportunity to be where we are? What if they had the opportunity? Should I be sulking now that I'm the only lady there? No, I think I should just continue working hard. Get into the field. Don't be afraid. There are so many what ifs that go through our minds. Like uh, I said, I'm a very quiet person. So my support system, my parents, family, friends, they would really push me. So the first thing, get a support system. Get mentors, dare to dream. A dream is not expensive. It's just within your mind. If you have a conception in your mind, it will translate to an action. And you'll go far. Don't listen to the voices around you. Listen to your voice within you.